Whoa, whoa, hold on a second, Linus. You can't do that. Actually, yes, we can. And today we're going to be showing you guys step by step how to build a single tower that can run two independent gaming rigs complete with their own keyboards, mice, and even video cards out of the same box off the same motherboard and the same CPU even. So hit that like button if you guys are super amped on this topic and stay tuned. This is going to be a wild ride. So let's start with the inspiration for this build. Cooler Master came to us and they were like, hey, we want to sponsor like a, a build that you guys do in the Master Case 5. It's all modular and there's upgradable parts and you can like put a lot of hard drives in or you could not put a lot of hard drives in. You could put a motherboard in or lots of graphics cards or just a few graphics cards. You could build like anything you want in there. Use your imagination. And I was kind of like, okay, well, my imagination is that I've always kind of wanted to do like something with virtualization and and like two gaming rigs running off of one computer because when you think about it looking at the rest of the hardware we're using here and we do this all the time we build like these super overpowered machines with like eight processing cores 32 gigs of ram we've got like enough usb ports to choke a stallion you got two graphics cards you throw a couple ssds and a couple hard drives and you go well holy crap you've got like two computers worth of hardware in the thing why can't you just legitimately run two computers off of it so that is exactly what we'll be doing. So our hardware list is a Cooler Master Mastercase Pro 5. We've got a V850 power supply with a Neptune 240M water cooler. We're using an ASUS X99 Deluxe motherboard with an eight core Core i7-5960X Extreme Edition. 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX memory. We've got a GTX Titan X, a GTX 780 Ti, and a GT, so what is this, a 9500 GS. Okay, I'll explain why we need that later as well as two Intel 730 series 480 gig SSDs and two Seagate three terabyte hard drives. And what are the hard drives for, for a gaming rig? Great question. We are gonna be putting not one, not two, but three operating systems on this machine two copies of Windows 10, and one copy of LimeTech Unraid Server Pro. So this machine will be a NAS, and it will be two gaming rigs at the same time. So let's start by building the machine. So the biggest way that we leveraged the modularity of the Master Case 5 was to reconfigure the drive cages. Our plan was to use two SSDs and two hard drives, which gave us a lot of space in the front of the case for a large water cooling system. However, in the event that we wanted more emphasis on the NAS portion of our build and we wanted to have a lot more hard drives for storage, we could easily use a different cooler, whether mounted in the rear or the top or just an air cooler on the CPU, and fill up the front of the case with drives. Okay, so that wasn't the most detailed physical build guide we've ever done, but it wasn't intended to be. The hard part today is component selection and software configuration. So if you want to know more about how this case works and all of its modularity, then check out the review video that we did here. No, we're going to talk about why we picked the other parts that we did first. Number one, you will need a CPU with virtualization technology. So this will be called VT-D, which is being able to pass through a PCI device to a virtual machine. Very important for passing through our video cards. And the second is VT-X. X, and this is all applying to Intel CPUs. And that is the ability to support virtualization at all. Step number two. Configure your graphics cards appropriately. For each gaming machine that you want to run off of your computer, you will need one dedicated gaming capable graphics card. Then in addition to that, you will need another GPU for Unraid to initialize when it's booting up. So this could be your onboard graphics, or in our case, we installed a 9500 GS, and this is important, in the top PCI Express slot for it to grab. Number three is other devices that you want each machine to have access to. In our case, both of our monitors are going to have support for an audio pass-through jack on the bottom of the monitor, so we can use the HDMI or DisplayPort audio off of our graphics card. 
if we wanted to run USB sound cards, that would be an option as well and would give both players the ability to use a microphone. USB headsets could work as well. But with any USB devices, you may have noticed our peripherals are all completely different. You will have to use different models of USB devices. More on this later. And finally, for storage, we've gone with two SSDs. This gives us redundancy, effectively RAID 1, of high enough capacity that you can split the capacity between the two machines. So our two 480 gig drives are actually turning into 240 gigs per box of redundant safe storage. And then our hard drives, again, we've gone with two hard drives, because if you go with more than two, then you're going to hurt your write performance. And Failover, if one drive dies, all the data is there through ButterFS is enough for us for these purposes. And we'd like to have the additional write speed. We can do about 100 plus megabytes per second to our array. So two hard drives for redundancy. Again, high enough capacity that we can effectively split them, getting one and a half terabytes of redundant storage per virtual machine. Step number one, format your USB drive in FAT32, calling it UNRAID in all caps. Download the latest version of Unraid off of the lime-technology.com website. Copy all of the files from your download onto your formatted USB disk. Then right click Make Bootable and run as administrator and press Enter. You can now eject your USB and put it into your computer. Step two, make sure you're running the latest BIOS for your motherboard. Change all SATA devices to AHCI mode and enable virtualization technology. In our case, it was under advanced CPU configuration and advanced system agent configuration within the BIOS. Now what you can do is use your boot override to boot to the USB drive that you just created. Once the system's booted up, navigate to http colon slash slash tower in the internet browser of another computer on the same network. At this stage, you can decide whether you want to purchase a key or get a trial key, which is limited to three storage devices and stops working after 60 days. It's a good way to try it out, though. Step four, hit info in the top right and double check to make sure that HVM and IOMMU are enabled. If they're not, you may need to reconfigure something in your motherboard BIOS to get your virtualization running. With that out of the way, go to main, Change your hard drive slots to something lower. Add your two hard drives using the drop downs to parity and disk one. Then change your cache slots, we're using these for our SSDs, to two and add both of the SSDs to cache drives. Next, go to tools, then system devices. Make sure your devices are showing up correctly. We're looking for our graphics cards. Anything that starts with 00, zero is built into the motherboard, while things that start with other numbers or letters are generally going to be discrete devices. So here we can see all three of our graphics cards are showing up correctly. Note this PCI device number at the beginning here. This will be important for the next step. Now scroll down to IOMMU groups. Find those devices. So in our case, here we are, here are our video cards and ensure that they are showing up in separate groups. If they're not, you may need to enable a workaround, but fortunately, thanks to the way that ASUS has implemented things on this motherboard, they are all showing up in separate groups, and it will be easy to assign these devices to separate VMs. Next, go to Settings and Identification. Here we can change the name of our server, which is how it'll show up on the network. So I'm going to call it UnLinus. And with this change made, we're going to have to re-navigate to our administration console. I would also recommend at this stage navigating to users and adding a password to the root user so that not just anyone can dink around in the administration console. Next, go to settings, then network settings, and change obtain IP address automatically to no. It's recommended, just for the sake of ease of use later on down the road, that you set a static IP so that it's easy to navigate to this administration console from another computer on the network. Now go back to main and start the array.
Once you see the green array started in the bottom left hand corner, click the Yes, I want to do this button next to Format and click Format. It'll take a while for your drives to format, and the more drives you have, the longer it'll take. Now that our format is complete, go to Shares, and we are actually going to create, using the Add Share button, four different shares. Note carefully the settings that we're using for them and replicate these exactly. Our ISO's share is for installing our VMs and the associated drivers. Our VDisk's share is for the boot drives of our VMs. They are running purely on SSD. Our Docker folder is for if we want to add applications like Plex Server to our Unraid server install, as opposed to our Windows VMs. And our final share, Array VDisks, is for mass storage drives that are on the hard drives for our virtual machines. Now go to Settings, VM Manager, change Enable VMs to Yes, change the ISO library to your ISO's directory that you just created, change the default network bridge to BR0, then press Apply. You'll know this worked because you'll see a VMs tab at the top. Next, go to the VMs tab and click Add VM. Name your VM and give it a description. And if you want it to automatically boot up when you fire up Unraid, then change Auto Start to Yes. Select the appropriate operating system. For Windows 10, you can select Windows 8.1, and that'll work just fine. And change from Basic View to Advanced View. Select the number of cores you want for your VM. In our case, we're going to pick eight of our virtual cores. So that's four real cores and four hyper-threaded ones. And then select how much memory you want for your VM. I'm going to give each of my VMs around 12 gigs of RAM. Don't change max memory, just initial memory. To obtain an operating system install ISO for Windows 10, you can simply download it from Microsoft and copy it to the ISOs folder. Then, for your Vert IO Drivers ISO, click this link and use the fourth download, so latest Vert ISO Win ISO, and copy that directly to the ISOs folder on your network. In our case, we can type backslash backslash unlinus and navigate to ISOs. With those downloaded, we can select them in the drop-down and set a primary VDisk location. In this case, user, VDisks. Choose a primary VDisk size. I'm going to go with 200 gigs. Press the plus button. Then select for the location, user, array VDisks. And for size, well, let's make it one terabyte. And change your graphics card to the one that you desire for this particular VM. We're going to make this our Titan X machine. For sound, choose the corresponding NVIDIA device in the drop-down. Or if you add additional sound cards, then you can definitely do that as well. Make sure your network bridge is the one that you created before. And finally, select the peripherals you're going to be using for this particular VM. Once you're ready, click Create, and the VM will start as soon as it's finished being created. And this, my friends, is where the magic happens. Within a couple seconds, you should see the screen illuminate, and your Windows install should begin just as it would if you were installing on a normal computer. OK, not quite normal. You will need to load a driver. So simply browse and go to your Vert.io, VIO store, the corresponding copy of Windows, so 8.1 for 10, and then the appropriate architecture, so we're running 64-bit, and install your storage device driver. Once that's done, you should see both of your storage devices show up, and you can install to your SSD storage device. Once you're dumped on the desktop, there are a few more drivers you'll need to install. So go to Device Manager, and there should be three exclamation mark items. Update driver software, browse, and go to your Vert IO disk, press OK, include subfolders, and click Next. Repeat this process for each of them. Once that's done, install your NVIDIA graphics card drivers from NVIDIA.com, and you are pretty much ready to go. You can create your second virtual machine in exactly the same way, with the one exception being that you'll need to change your CPU cores to cores that you didn't already use for this virtual machine. In cases where you want to install some additional applications on Unraid itself, you may want to reserve one or two cores for Unraid and leave the rest of them allocated to your virtual machines. 
There are a couple of more pro tips. Put your PC in high performance mode, disable fast boot, sleep, and hibernation, and there's a guide over on the Guru3D forums that you'll need to follow, especially if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card and you're using the onboard audio to ensure that your audio doesn't get garbled. It is a registry hack, but it's not too complicated to follow along. So this is it, my friends. Moment of truth time. Both of our VMs are set to start up automatically once the system is powered on. So in theory, within about a minute or so, we're gonna have Windows 10 running twice on one computer. So Unraid takes a little while to boot up. Give her a minute, you know. Oh, there it goes. Okay, my two virtual machines are starting. Other side, oh, oh, this one's already at the desktop. Yes, my friends, there you have it. Mouse keyboard, Star Wars Battlefront Beta. This is kind of it. This is the Star Wars Battlefront Beta running at ultra details, 1080p on two virtual machines on the same box at 106 FPS on this one and 104 FPS on this one. Yes, we are getting full discrete performance on two instances of the game simultaneously. So now that we've gotten this far, I mean, what's the fun of having a dual headed gaming box if you don't have somebody to enjoy it with? Let's go get Luke. Admiral Akbar, you like bounce around when I hit you. It'll show you like a cone of where they are, which is red, but then it'll also show you like red shapes. Hello. Oh, there's one left. Is there behind something like the rocks or whatever? Is Hello, bye. Oh. <laughs> they take a sec to blow up. Do you have regenerating health in this game? Yes. Yeah, I got an anti-vehicle turret. Cool. And a proximity bomb. Yeah, man. There's, there's, they're unlocking more waves. Oh, this guy has a fucking shield and a fucking jetpack. So that was fun, and to my eye, I can't tell that I'm running on a virtual machine, but without objective measurements, I can't quantify the difference for you guys. So I've actually got Luke running our standardized Battlefront benchmark, which was used in our performance roundup, which you guys will actually be able to check out in, I think, one or two days, depending on how the release schedule goes, to validate how our 980 Ti Mind you, it's running on three CPU physical cores versus it was running on a six core in there, stacks up against running it on a dedicated machine. And I think the numbers should be with us any moment here. Here we go. So this is running on a 5960X versus on a 5930K, which is actually a higher clock speed chip, not to mention that it has all six of its cores versus only three of them. And the 980 Ti scored 120 FPS average. We got 102.5 FPS average. I am feeling pretty fracking good about those results. And this is at 1080p Ultra. So guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you didn't like it, then come on! And if you did like it, hit that like button, get subscribed, and maybe even consider supporting us here at Linus Tech Tips. You can buy a cool t-shirt like this one. You can change your Amazon bookmarked one with our affiliate code with the uh, instructions up there. By the way, we'll have links for where you can check out all of this hardware as well as Unraid in the video description at the link to the Linus Tech Tips forum where you can also contribute to us. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks again for watching and uh, I will see you guys next time we do a crazy project like this. Man, this was, this was, this was a thing.